Hello everyone. We'll start very shortly. I've realized that it would be a nice idea to add some music to this intro part of the stream. But uh, I'll think about that. I would very much like to be some sort of personal music, you know, have a personal touch. But we'll see. I'll be right back. Alrighty then, I think we can begin. So, hello everyone. I hope you're having a nice evening. Uh, at least it's evening where I'm from. Today we'll have a bit of a more straightforward uh, part stream, let's say. I'd like to talk with you about some very, very basic stuff. I don't want to get into... Uh, a very complicated subject or discuss a lot about um, you know how to create something like we did in in the last streams I want to talk about some very simple uh, principles let's say but some that are very important when uh, when we are building on our art fundamentals so today as you've probably noticed from the title <coughs> We'll be talking about basic objects breakdown. So, what's uh, what's so important about basic objects? Well, the thing is that basic objects can very easily be um, be transformed, let's say, into some very simple shapes, right? So, shapes, um, objects. Um, not uh, not necessarily the objects I was talking about in the first place, but uh, 3D shapes, you know, like cubes, uh, spheres, cylinders, uh, pyramids, prisms, whatever. So what I'd like to do is go again, as we usually do, go through some warm-up exercises, uh, make sure that we um, we start, you know, uh, the drawing process with uh, the right uh, techniques and then go a bit through some of those uh, 3D shapes I was mentioning just create them you know in uh, a perspective it doesn't really matter if it's the best most uh, correct perspective but it's important to have a an idea of how the object looks when you turn it around you know so we we won't focus on drawing just from one side or no we want to capture the feeling of the object capture the whole shape and then after I draw some of those some of the basic ones I'd like to try to turn them around you know we've done this I think a little bit last stream but uh, I want to do this more it's a very nice exercise to get to understand uh, how the object looks from all sides and I think it's one of the basic stuff I will have to understand to be able to draw from imagination so uh, we'll go through that we'll turn them around a bit try to understand how they look from different sides those 3d uh, shapes and afterwards, I would like to grab some objects, I found some images online, and try to simplify them using the shapes I was talking about. So, let's not waste any more time, and let's get started. I um, didn't manage to uh, make more um, exercise sheets so we'll just use the first one because this exercise it's um, it's one of those who who never age let's say 
it's important no matter what. It's an ageless exercise. So we'll go through this one again. And when I have the time, I'm not really sure because the following week will be a bit busy. But when I get the time, I will work on the other sheets as well in order to uh, to give them, you know, uh, to you as well so that you can try them out at the same time. Maybe print them out however you want. Uh, you can find the link to a drive, to a folder, where I will put uh, all those exercises. So right now it's only this one. But you can go there, download it, and if you have a, a drawing tablet you can do this with me right now. So I would like to to try and uh, draw those those straight lines going through as many points as possible. And what I'm focusing on today is maybe not uh, not drawing that fast as I usually do, but more importantly, try and hit accuracy. Try and, and go a bit slower, but control my line along the way. Force my muscles to oh, <laughs> force my muscles to to hit the dots. And you see, as I go down, my hand is already in a in a pretty weird position, right? Because I'm starting here, yeah, and as I go lower with the hand, my uh, elbow gets too close to my stomach, and. I, I'm not able to, to get those bottom lines as straight as I would like to. That's why it's important to, to be able to move your hand as freely as possible and have plenty of space to draw them. And also, try to make those lines without moving, um, without moving your hand you know don't uh, don't move it around keep it steady and just move everything from the shoulder so that you have a wide wide line drawn so I've saw I've saw I've seen <laughs> my English went um, went rubbish a bit for a second um, I've seen a, a video of someone who was drawing with a pencil and uh, how they were, were drawing on this, uh, you know, huge paper and uh, they did those very, very straight horizontal lines and vertical lines. They just went, you know, very steadily with the pencil and they were holding it like this, you know because uh, I guess that's the correct way to, to hold it when you're drawing on a, on a big piece of paper. So they were drawing those, those lines very, very steadily. Water break. And they had a lot of control over it. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting thing to practice if you have the possibility. Because, you know, that's how they used to do it. And they still do. In uh, like professional art schools, I guess. That's how they're called. Or traditional art schools, maybe. Yeah. They, uh, they draw like that. They learn from the basics. So, you know. That's one way to get started. Maybe some people would argue that that's the, the correct way to get started. I don't know if there is a correct way to do anything. I mean, you know, as long as you try, try your best, try to learn from your mistakes, try to get an understanding of what's happening and an understanding of how you can move 
this skill that you're trying to learn in the direction that you want to. I think that's it's pretty good for for a beginning, you know. No matter what you're doing, it doesn't have to be based on very very strict rules. You can learn a lot from from very different exercises. Perhaps it is more efficient. That I cannot say. Because I, I didn't go through that process and see how well it went. I have no idea. But for now, you know, I'm just spending as much time as I can on uh, on feeding this hobby of mine, this passion that I have for drawing. And if you have a passion, I, I advise you do the same, you know, spend as much time as you possibly can. Of course, don't, uh, don't overdo it, don't burn out. There are many things that can go wrong, but remember to, to stay connected to that part of you that, that loved doing that particular stuff for a reason. Now, uh, we've gone through some of those basic exercises. Um, oh yeah, hello subliminal clown, welcome, I'm glad you're here. And yeah, it's, it's very important how uh, we hold our arm and, um, you know, shoulder works best what I've heard from and what a friend from my experience um, also for little details of course you start moving your wrist around but yeah there are so so many things that maybe we don't consider on the first go and we we just go with it we learn other stuff and when you go back to it you know there are those little things that can improve a lot of your whole process so it's always good to to go back to the basics and try to learn from as many people as you possibly can. Okay, so now for the um, other exercise that will help us today, we'll go again through some ovals, as you probably already have been accustomed to, to me doing on the stream. This is a very, very general, useful exercise. There are so many circumstances where you you can um, learn from this, you know, and it can help in the f in further drawings. So it's good to go through this. Now again, uh, remember that we are I am trying, and I advise you to do the same, to draw those ovals from the shoulder. Try to keep your wrist steady and your elbow pretty steady. So to have more control over how those ovals look like. And don't, um, don't necessarily put too much pressure on doing this. If you're doing it on paper as well, you know, you don't need too much pressure. You need just enough. Because uh, when you're putting in too much pressure, you may, you may be able to get more accurate, let's say, uh, ovals, right? Because there's a lot of pressure. But at the same time, you know, your line weight is very heavy and it becomes difficult to erase what you're drawing, right? So, you know, medium pressure. Try to control the arm. Uh, oh, so about relaxing the hand. Again, I'm not doing this uh, necessarily um, uh, on purpose. But relaxing the hand is a very good tip. <laughs> because I've learned this a long time ago. When I was doing my practice for becoming um, an architecture student. I was doing lines with as much pressure as possible, right? To, to get those, you know, uh, I was struggling to get the, them right, you know, to, to 
to make the ovals perfectly and the lines again. So I was putting a lot of pressure and then when things went wrong, I was grabbing an eraser and I went over it. But of course, when you're using um, a real eraser <laughs> and you draw those very, very heavy, heavy lines, you won't be able to erase everything. So I was trying to erase as much as possible over and over again. And of course, then you have to draw the line next to the first that you erased. And it was a mess. So I learned while doing that to try and draw, and draw the lines as easily as possible, like with, uh, with as little pressure as possible so that I can come back to them and if necessary I will be able to to erase them much faster for the purposes of this demonstration right I was able to erase much faster and create those technical drawings that we had to do but uh, yeah now it comes more natural to put less pressure but in the beginning it was it was very difficult and it was something that I had to learn to do um, yeah yeah it gets pretty shaky uh, if you hold too tight and you know uh, it misses the purpose I think it's uh, is the same as uh, driving I guess even though I don't have a, a permit to drive but I've tried uh, you know getting the pass and everything and it was the same thing um, you know holding the wheel if you hold it too tightly you will have less control over the car and you need to move your hands around while driving a lot so you know less uh, less pressure means more control actually and it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, you know, like the other way around. You, you wouldn't expect it to be like that. So what I'm focusing now on is making those ovals close up. Then I'm trying to get them as close to each other as possible without overlapping. Doesn't work always, but it's fine. And other than that, I'm trying to get them in between the two lines. So that's why I think this exercise is great. Because you can focus on, on many things at once. Or you can focus on individual things until you get them right. Whatever works for you. And also, I will show you an exercise. I saw it, I think yesterday, on uh, Proco. So on YouTube. And... Proko showed how you can do some really cool ovals that uh, that test quite a bit of your technique and it looks nice at the same time. So I'll show you after I finish this line. Oh, um, now I'm hurrying so I can get to show you faster. Hey, Scoop! Hey, thanks for thanks for arriving. Thanks for being here. Hope you arrived where well where you had to. <laughs> That's just some outside of the stream info, but I hope you had a, a nice uh, a nice trip. Um, <laughs> if you love something, let it go. Let go of the stream wheel. <laughs> well, I'm not sure we we should take that advice at heart, but. I think I'm getting where uh, where you're pointing at your your height your heart is in the right place let's say <laughs> right <laughs> okay now back to this exercise I would like to show you what uh, Proko showed all all of his YouTube subscribers so it's a very nice exercise it's very cute so we're starting first with uh, an horizontal oval. Then we'll tr we're trying to do more of a round shape, but we're trying to, you know, to get it touching those two extremities. Then 
I think what he did was he drew some but again from the shoulder I had the tendency to draw from the wrist now but no let's draw from the shoulder make those two small um, small curves uh, curves no ovals right and then three more And there you have it, right? It's, it's that mushroom from Mario. So yeah, this is an exercise where we bring, about, uh, bring together some basic oval shapes. And you have to go through different motions. And it's very cute in the end. You can have a ton of those little mushrooms all over the place. And they can be, you know, aligned at different angles. It's nice. I guess you can do them in whatever order you want to. Oh, there we go. And they can be sad or maybe angry. You can go with anything. Oh, let's try to do one of those. And then we'll begin the second part. Huh. Okay, this is quite nice. Let's try to make this one very angry. Oh, this is a very angry mushroom. Okay, so now that we went through the warm up, you can do this for longer if you feel the need to, you know. Uh, it can be, I guess, up to half an hour or maybe an hour. The important part is not to do just the warm up, like, I think it helps to do the warm-up, you know, if you can do it on a daily basis, I guess that will help you along the way. But don't just get perfect in doing the warm-up. It's important to do the warm-up so that we can use those techniques into something else, in doing something different along the way. So now, what I would like to start with is those basic objects I was talking about. So I will grab one of um, one of the pictures I've prepared one of the photos and let's see if I can open this and show you all okay so um, there we go I'll have to open pure ref I use pure ref a lot I recommend it it's great it's an incredible tool recommend you use it as well if you want to have some uh, references that are very easy to to place somewhere on the screen and it can be on a different monitor it doesn't matter you can move this box around very easily I'm just putting there for uh, my viewers sake so that you can see everything happening on the same screen hydration check there we go. So we can see here a lot of very basic shapes. Some of them are more complex than the others. But what I'd like to focus on today is some of the more, more simpler ones, like the cube, the sphere, right? The, the cone, uh, the cylinder, the prism, maybe the pyramid. Just draw them, you know, um, draw them once, right, to get the feel of uh, of how they look like. And yeah, we would probably have a sphere that's uh, that's very very much a circle. What creates the sphere is the shadows and the light, light the the lighter parts. So basically when when we have a sphere we don't really see the 3D part of it until we add some other elements but we can show how um, a sphere would connect to a different object 
by the hole it left it leaves in that object let me uh, show you exactly what I mean so if we have a cube right or a cuboid shape there we go so if we have this cuboid shape and then we want to to add a sphere make the sphere connect with that cube you could actually say that you know the sphere is intersecting with the cube and creating this kind of hole in the cube you know if we extract the sphere from the cube we can see something similar to this being left behind this is really interesting because it shows the roundness of the 3D shape of a sphere by creating a negative with the help of a different object, of a different 3D object, right? So we, we all know if we see something like this, right, that you can put a sphere in that corner right it will fit and I think that's uh, that's helpful to understand shapes you know try to uh, to connect it, them with one another and see what happens what suggestions do I have for people who don't have an iPad well there is something really nice that's been invented for quite quite a while and that is without any further ado, paper. Uh, and I'm not just saying that jokingly, but paper might be a lot more useful to start drawing than an iPad. Yeah, I know, it's amazing. But uh, being very serious, I've started learning how to draw on paper. And I've drawn a whole lot of those uh, you know basic exercises and playing around while I was a child doing everything on paper so the circle in the square was amazing thank you thank you I mean uh, I consider it is pretty amazing to to think of those those uh, uh, you know imagination exercises you know intersecting stuff uh, so going back to the paper stuff, I think it's really important Now I'll just draw some spheres now while talking, but I think it's really important to start out with paper No matter what because paper teaches you some very important lessons First of all, it teaches you the one about the pressure How much pressure to apply when you're holding a pencil because this pen in my hand even though we're creating digital stuff it does apply pressure right that's why we use it because we want to create this false impression of uh, of drawing with a pencil digitally on paper hey welcome Himanshu nice to see you here hope you'll enjoy this stream so yeah starting up with some paper try to Try to get used with paper first. That would be my advice. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. Do whatever you want. But uh, paper taught me some very important lessons, right? So that with the pa that uh, regarding um, uh, pressure. Another important lesson that paper taught me was not erasing, not erasing my mistakes. I had this tendency, right? of erasing and trying to get those exercises perfect the stuff I was doing you know drawing straight lines and and drawing the curves and everything I was trying to get them to be perfect from the start and that doesn't work without exercise maybe you'll get the first one or the second one perfect you know because that's usually what uh, happens when you start and learning a new skill you randomly get like a out of nowhere perfect result and you think wow that means 
I am able to do it, so therefore I should do it all the time. At least that's what I was thinking. And that's so false because I was uh, blaming myself for not being able to, to do that perfect result afterwards. So the idea is to not erase your mistakes, but to notice them and to understand from them. So that's what, why paper is quite useful compared to digital because you you won't be able to erase after after many many overdrawns let's say the result would look pretty weird so it's no point in erasing anymore so i would advise you you grab a basic uh, piece of paper a4 whatever and start doing some of those simple exercises but don't keep it just at exercises do something fun do, do some, uh, you know, little stickmen. And maybe the stickmen, you know, have a fight with each other. Or whatever. Start very, very basically. And create stories. That's what I advise you to do at first. Apart from the basic exercises, right? From the ones that teach you technique. Do something fun with drawing. Use it in, in a fun way for yourself, whatever that may be. And that's going to help you um, connect it with some positive feelings. It's very important. Connecting with, uh, with positive, positive feelings is what makes us stick to something. So, yeah, try to do that whenever you're drawing. Make it be something that's uh, important for you. I think that answers a bit about your question. So uh, <laughs> what should you do if you don't have an iPad? Um, but yeah, if you want to start digitally drawing, that's a different subject. So I don't think we'll go there right now. But if you want to, you know, leave, uh, leave the question. If you want me to tell you uh, a bit about technical aspects, what I know about digital tablets, whatever. If you want to, uh, we'll go there. So now, um, you know, let's start with the most basic thing that we can draw and turn around and it will make sense when we turn it around. So that would be a cube. So simply try to draw the basic cube from this, um, you know, uh, X, Y, Z perspective. This is axonometry, right? When we see things in this manner. But now, what I would like to do is add a bit more perspective to this cube. Try to make it more 3D. So we can keep this central part, those lines, right? But now to add perspective, we return to, to that lesson that I was talking about a few weeks ago that tells us there are some points, you know, that are connected somewhere in the distance, right? And that's why if we draw lines, they will tend to connect with that point in the distance. But that's why things look more realistically in perspective is because that's how we're seeing things with our eyes. So you can draw those helpful lines if you want to, but this this works just the same for the lines on top and the other way around as well. So to go something something like that. Okay, so now that we have this Rubik cube, sort of, um, what I'd like to do is try to to see it a bit lower from from a lower perspective just a simple exercise right so that we teach our mind what to do in the future so let's say hmm, let me start like this okay so when I go a bit lower like imagine if this is a building right and you're in a separate building in the lift and you're going to the first floor 
you won't see the building just uh, the same as you did you will only see a tiny bit of the roof right as you're going lower and afterwards you won't see the roof at all the roof will just disappear and if we go so let me draw those arrows and if we go to a even lower point the building would look like would look something like that this cube that we're drawing right something similar to this so you see that those lines what we're doing now basically is we are moving the horizon line we're moving it lower and lower and lower and this actually changed into a lesson in perspective I didn't mean that but if we're here so we're just moving the perspective line lower and lower and those lines connect to some dots in the distance but now what I'd like to do is turn it uh, turn the cube around a bit more abstractly so let's say you know without thinking about it right let's just draw the lines and try to exaggerate and erase the the parts that that are going outside I'm just I'm just doing this because it's it's easier for me right to just connect some of the some of the lines in this manner without being too precise for the sake of the exercise oh I made a little rhyme there okay so you know try to move it around uh, what I'm moving around basically is this part those three lines that intersect each other you know I'm just changing their proportions let's let's change the paper so right I'm just playing around with proportions based on those three lines that's how I, how I see it you can have some that are way longer than the others and of course this won't look like a cube all of the time right because I'm moving quite quickly not paying attention to all the proportions we I don't want to get them all right I'm just doing this uh, to get used to the fact that you know I want to turn around the cube I want to see this object from many many points of view and maybe go back with uh, some of those remember some of those buildings where you don't see the um, the roof very well but you see a bit right oh thanks thanks Himanshu uh, I really hope this is useful to, to the people who are viewing if you want to try uh, to draw along I'll be really happy if you do so if not I'll be just as happy if um, if you listen if you learn something new okay so I think we we did quite enough of those boxes already we'll get back to this later on because right now you know those boxes are pretty meaningless without any context but once we add stuff like we did earlier with the sphere over here oh there we go like we did here if we add stuff and we start interacting uh, making those uh, objects interact with each other we're going to create some awesome awesome objects so moving on let's try to draw some cylinders another important challenge in every artist's vocabulary let's say so the cylinder is basically two ovals like we drew earlier that are connected 
and the cylinder doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be a perfect tube something like that no it's not necessary though I think it's um, it's what defines it <laughs> a cylinder but for the sake of this uh, exercise I would like to create some of those trunk truncated cones right some truncated cones that was a bit of a struggle to pronounce, but that's fine. Um, so what what this is is uh, you know a cone that's that's got his uh, or its top removed. So that's a truncated cone. But this helps because we don't have to necessarily keep the same proportions. But what's interesting about a truncated cone, you know. It is. It can actually be a cylinder in perspective. So let me let me show you what I mean. So if we have a cylinder that we see from the side, right? And this is the middle point. If we want to show a bit of perspective, what we can do is keep this side intact. Right, we just keep it steady and then we move this part further to the back so it will be smaller let's say like that so now we can imagine that this is exactly the same cylinder right but this part is further back and because of that if you look at the shape, this is basically a truncated cone, right? But using our imagination, we can see this as being a cylinder in perspective. This would be a dotted line as well. We don't see that one. This as well. Okay, so this is, this is very interesting when noticing how those shapes interact with each other, how perspective interacts with, with the way we draw shapes. I think those are nice observations to make while you're drawing. So let's start by by trying to to move the cylinders around and create a bit more chaos. Because chaos is not always bad. So let's make let's say the top a bit more rounded, the bottom a bit more squashed. Oh, this is a bit more difficult. This is where drawing lines in all sorts of directions comes really in handy. You know, that's why all the the basic technique exercises are used for. And oh, let's make a, a bigger one. Oh, something like that. And try to... Oh, yep, yeah. there we go. Hey, thank you, thank you, Himanshu. Thanks for uh, for being here, and hope you're having uh, a wonderful evening, rest of the evening, or whatever time it is where you're from. I'm really glad you you stopped by. All right. So, as I was saying, cylinders, right? Cylinders, truncated cones, perspectives. Now, uh, what I'm noticing about what I'm doing right now is I'm making those cylinders very, very squashed because my exercise earlier was uh, focused a lot on drawing the ovals like that. But if we are honest with ourselves, the cylinder is more rounded, right? Because the idea is there's a circle here on each of those two sides so you no know, something to be careful about when drawing those cylinders oh yeah i'm just drawing that middle line so that it's more helpful for me 
to understand the shape and yeah let's try to make those more rounded it's a bit harder when they're they are more rounded because you don't get to or i don't get to um to connect them very well when i draw them like this yeah there are more chances i will get to connect right but when i draw like that mm, chances diminish so i have to practice this more okay and let's make just one more, one more very, very elongated cylinder over here. Oh, there we go, something like that. And there, that's pretty good. And again, the middle line. Okay, so what can we do with this stuff that we've just learned. So we, we had the sphere earlier, we had cubes, quite plen uh, quite a lot of cubes, and we have some cylinders. Let's try to bring them together, see what happens. So let's say we have uh, the basis, which is a big cube. Let me make this quite big, okay? So it is obvious what's going to happen and let me make it uh, you know a bit in perspective not too much but you know just enough okay yeah you see I, I'm not getting everything right and for the purposes of the exercise I don't have to this is so that we can all understand what's going on. Uh, it's not that we get those shapes perfectly. So what I did earlier was, you know, remove the sphere from one of the corners. But what I'd like to do now is let's think about intersecting a cylinder with this cube. And let me start with drawing the middle part for the cylinder. I'm going to keep it quite simple. Uh, water. Don't forget about drinking water. I'm very serious. Okay, so here we'll have the top bit and then we have the, the bottom. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so like we learned, right, connect those two connect those two. Oh, this is a bit tricky because I drew drew it very very near the um, uh, the line that makes this side of the cube. But I'm just gonna adjust this quickly. You know, cheat a bit. There we go. Something like that. And let's imagine that this is dotted. This is in the background. Okay, so right now uh, we have this cylinder, we have this cube, and they are intersecting somehow. And it's up to us to decide how we want those to intersect. So what I'm thinking about is I'd like to, to intersect them somewhere around here. And if I look at this shape right on top, the way this should intersect is follow the same rule like no, there should be another of those uh, ovals over here that help us understand how how this intersects with the cube right so here we can pretty much imagine that the cylinder would still be visible, right, on this side. This is visible. But this part, this area, is already inside of the cube. So we don't see that anymore. If we want to draw what we won't see, what is intersected, we can even 
go towards the back and also draw another of those ovals oh, over here so now that was me drawing from the wrist you saw how wobbly that was and this is this is drawing from the shoulder even though the angle is pretty bad for my hand but it's a way better result than drawing from the wrist okay so this would be as well dotted and this as well because oh no oh yes 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 it would be because you know what we'll see is this we'll see the cube in all of its glory let me move the no not this but let me move it like that okay because it was in my way right so what we are seeing now to make things a bit less complicated is We'll be seeing this, we'll be seeing this, goes around, cuts the cube, and then here comes the cube in front of us. So this is how those two objects pretty much intersect. And if we remove any of this weird stuff in the background, you get a sense of of how objects, you know, get to appear connected to each other. Simple objects, simple shapes, right? So, yeah, now if we want to get things a bit more realistical, I would, I would get this a bit more rounded, right? But other than that, I think it, this looks quite good. And now what we can do to make things a bit more complicated is add a sphere. Let's add a sphere here, a smaller one. But let's just do it, just for the sake of the exercise. Okay, now we'll, we'll hate our lives for some, some minutes while we figure things out, but afterwards we'll be happier for it. So how does this sphere intersect with the cylinder. Hmm. Very, very interesting premise. Uh, but what I'd like to do is think a bit about how a sphere intersects with the side of a cube, right? Well, if you have a bigger sphere, that's let's say like that, and the sphere uh, let me draw it so that we can all understand a little bit better. So, you know, the sphere is like that. This is the sphere. This is the cube. And this face is this one. Okay. Now let me just erase a bit so that we understand better. Okay. So this sphere intersects just a little bit, right, with the cube. But the shape that it will leave behind is definitely a circle and if we want to give it more uh, three-dimensionality we would shade it right it would be darker on the top if light comes from the top yeah it would be darker here and get a little bit more you know lighter towards the bottom that side would be pretty dark because the light if the light comes from up it leaves some shadow in that area okay so this is how a sphere would intersect with the cube with one side of the cube but what is a cylinder if not a side of a cube that's you know turned around like when you're uh, wrapping presents let's say and you have to give someone a tube of a bottle right a bottle of whiskey and you have to wrap it with some wrapping paper you would, you would just get 
a rectangle and you would go around. So I think the same principle applies if the sphere uh, bites from the cylinder, it would leave also a circle, a circular shape. So uh, how does the shape look like? Well, I would say because it's, uh, it's not actually perfectly round, it's not perfectly, you know, straight. This was a very simple example, but here we have to take into consideration, right, this roundedness. So I would say it would go something like, you know, um, keeping in mind that this is the sphere, it would probably go something like that. And maybe, hmm, maybe bite like this, right? Because I'm trying, I'm trying uh, to imagine all of this, you know. I'm going a lot on on feeling as well. This is very, very interesting to try out while using a program that has the, the possibility to create 3D shapes. So a modeling, a 3D modeling program software. So what I think I'll do in the future with this kind of exercise so that I can better understand how things bite from each other, how those uh, 3D shapes bite from each other is I will try to use Blender. I've been playing around with Blender quite a bit and it will be very, very useful for this kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah this, is, uh, this is really cool. I'm glad I, I thought about it. And I recommend you to the same, Blender is, is free. So if you want to, to play around with shapes and shape interactions, yeah, go for it. I drew a bit of shadow there, it's something like that. But you see how, how by, uh, by intersecting some simple shapes we didn't use anything apart from sphere cylinder and and uh, cube we get an object that's way more complex than what we've started with and it could be similar to something in reality so this is the part that i wanted to to get to this evening exactly this the fact that objects that surround us, that are creating this physical dimension, right? Objects are made up of simpler and simpler and simpler objects. And don't think necessarily about cells, because that's going a bit too much into detail. I'm talking about simplifying, right? So they are made up of more simple objects that are intersected with one another. Maybe some of them are, are cut, right, are sliced. Maybe some of them have other objects put together. And so it creates something a bit more complex, you know? So now for the second part, for the third part, actually, <laughs> But the second part of this explanation, when we're going into the project part, what I'd like to do is show you some objects that I've prepared, some references, and let's try to recreate them using some of the knowledge that we've gathered so far, intersecting some difficult, you know, some of those more complex shapes mostly I think will work with ba very basic shapes don't worry but try to play around with them intersect some uh, retract some parts slice them whatever is necessary to get closer to to the basic shape that those objects are made from you know to, to simplify them as much as possible so until then I would advise you take a little break because it's been an hour, you know, sitting around on the chair. We don't want to 
uh, to hurt our backs, you know, to hurt our arms. Get up, you know, take a break, go to the bathroom, grab some water, do some simple stretching exercises because those are very, very important for anybody who's working uh, at a desk for long periods of time. And I'll be back in about three, four minutes with the third part of today's lesson. So see you very soon. Hey, hey. Okay, so I am back. I've opened the window a little bit and it's freezing cold outside, but it's really nice to get some, uh, some fresh air into the room. After the stream, I'll probably leave the window open a bit more, but right now, I can't actually because it's way too much noise going around like cars and you know and a lot of stuff that would just disturb the stream so unfortunately I won't be able to keep the window open while streaming and that is something I will have to think about when the summer comes around you know so yeah until then we'll see okay so now I think we can get on with some very, very, very simple objects that I've prepared for you. So you can see here in uh, 
the corner of my view, right? We have six objects that I've prepared that I would like to try and draw with you um, so that we can better understand the shapes that are creating those objects. So first of all, let's start with the shelf. The shelf, the, sh the shelves, there are multiples, you know, the, the cupboard. Okay, that cupboard. So let's start with that one because it's quite simple, quite straightforward. It is basically a cube that's been elongated, um, a cuboid, if we are to be more precise, and it has some smaller cuboids removed from within. So if we try to replicate, and let's not try to make them just the same, you know, draw just from observation, but let's, let's use our, our minds and think about how they look like. Therefore, let's draw them in a different perspective. Okay? So let me think about it. Okay? This cupboard, let's see. I want to draw it from this perspective. Okay? Just a different exercise, you know? So, so we make our minds think of different things because it's a different... Um, skill that we can learn through observing and it's something very different that we can learn through um, through moving around in 3d space one of those objects and i'm not saying one is more important than the other i think both both skills are very important and you can combine those as well but right now i'm gonna try to do this so Let's imagine that out of this cuboid we have removed, right, as we said earlier, oh, some smaller ones. Oh, this is, this is getting tricky, you know. It's quite tricky to draw lines that are almost parallel and straight at the same time. Uh, it is what it is. It's important to do the exercise and um, I, I think I would like to start with those three shells because it's a bit easier to draw from there we can start with one trying to keep the perspective a little bit at least now that was another and another one Okay, they, they don't look that realistically, but for the purposes of the exercise, I think it's fine. Again, what would help me is this line in the back. Oh. <laughs> My hand is not listening to me anymore, you see? You see how he's doing the curve in the back? <laughs> I think that means my muscles are a bit tired. And that's fine. It's perfectly normal. Afterwards, I will just relax a bit. Okay, and now let's think about, yeah, how those shelves go towards the back, the back of the cupboard, but they don't go all the way to the back, right? There is a bit, a bit of, um, um, how do you call it, you know? there is something else in the back so there should be a distance over here not all the way towards the back but a little distance yeah something like that hello welcome welcome to the stream glad you could make it and yeah we we are talking about objects basic basic objects so, um, oh, this, this really stuck into my mind. I don't, don't remember how it's called in English. <laughs> oh, this is funny. But we'll get there. Um, yeah. 
anyways so you can see how basically starting from that box that box shape and creating those holes which which are basically just other boxes removed from from within yeah it's just four of those boxes which were taken out of the main box okay we've created something that looks quite similar to the cupboard that's in the photo here in the corner so that's what we're striving for that's what uh, kind of understanding we want to achieve we want to to remove objects from other objects but simple ones right so moving on I think we can go with the um, speakers because this is a tiny tiny bit more complicated now and I'll just tell you why if I can zoom in on the speakers right so we see also those buttons on one side right and the actual um, rounded speakers like the amplifiers not sure how they are called but yet again I'll try to draw one speaker the one on the right which has the buttons visible and I'll try to draw it from a very different perspective you know let's try to draw it like this eh? something like this right where the top is quite visible and you know those lines yeah it would be something maybe lower even something like that trying to also keep a bit of the proportions not too much it's not an uh, exercise on ac accuracy but it's something that uh, we want to learn from so keep going like that and we have the basic cuboid shape right there we go. Oh, let me take another sip of water. Really need to stay hydrated because it's been a very long day. And uh, I have to be honest with you, I got quite tired today. But it's alright. Because, you know, this is quite relaxing. It's, it's important to be relaxing. As I'm also learning something, but it's also a bit relaxing at the same time. So, it's a nice combination. Now, let's imagine over here, the top part, that we have a sphere that's actually inside of the object, right? So, it would be something like this. If you imagine, it's... Um, let me show you. So, if this, this over here is this face, right, then the sphere that I just drew would be something like this. It has a very, very, very slight part, you know, that sticks out from, um, from the box. So this part that sticks out, it would look something like that if we drew from perspective. So it's that part that sticks out, and it's this part over here on top of the uh, on top of the speaker. So now this part is surrounded by a circle. Let's just say a circle, right? So I'll just keep uh, the stuff in the back. You know I won't erase it but what I want to do is I want to make it dotted okay make it dotted so you can easily see that it is behind there we are okay so now for this side we have a much larger circle Right, which is uh, in perspective an oval 
trying to get you know something similar to what it looks like doesn't have to be just the same and yeah this starts to have depth so you can see it goes deeper and deeper and there are several shapes that help create this illusion first of all I think we can notice a big sphere that cuts right through yeah so it's a big sphere that cuts through this circle and it creates this kind of uh, first layer of depth you see this one and then everything stops there and there's yet another circle it surrounds this right it's a bit more difficult to draw now because you have to follow the same curve that uh, we had beforehand and then afterwards you can see it's a different sphere that cuts a little bit deeper and so you have you know those layers on top of layers and I guess you you can imagine how all of those objects exist at first and then are removed it becomes quite difficult to create oh but yeah that's why it's an exercise right okay let's say something like that and in the end you know there's just another one of those I think so you have first of all one removed and then you have something like that and another one removed then maybe another one and then another sphere in the back so that's pretty much how I imagine this looks like in uh, 3d so again we would have one of those shapes that are positioned over there and for the knobs on the side for the buttons uh, those are simply cylinders that stick out so if we drew three sets of cylinders over here right you can imagine they are connected and then somewhere they intersect right with the box and they intersect in again the same shape this oval and what's left you know this is removed this is removed all of this is removed because it's uh, hidden and what we have left are those buttons on the outside which have a bit of texture on them I think we can uh, notice a bit over here okay so I think we we got to understand a bit more with the help of this object moving on to another one let's see what can we pick um, the phone now that I'm noticing it is quite simple It seems to be just uh, a very uh, rectangular shape that has the corners rounded. So I'm not sure it's um, it's an important exercise to go through now. But let's try to do the bottle. The bottle is a bit more challenging because it's not uh, that straightforward. You can imagine this bottle as being two cylinders so let's see we would have and let's change the perspective a bit yeah let's make it like this so let's say that you have one big cylinder at the bottom of the bottle and then another one at the top 
try to make it the same uh, position let's see okay we got those lines huh? try to make the lines as straight as possible there we go pretty good and then we have another cylinder that's a bit smaller that is positioned inside oh, there we go had to reposition myself on the chair there so just a bit smaller I'm trying to get the right shape there we are so this is this is nice yeah okay something like that and the top bit is again a bit smaller so let's connect those two as well huh? okay and now you can notice that at some point there is a transition from the big cylinder towards the smaller one so let's say this transition is a quarter of the way to towards the top part so if I look at the object you know it's somewhere around here the transition something like that and you can see that first of all we could we could have the large um, oval right from the large cylinder here at the bottom then there is another distance until we get towards the smaller cylinder so let's take that into consideration take the small distance into consideration and in between there is this rounded shape you see like they're connected right they're connected with a sphere why did I say sphere because you can imagine here being a sphere that continues towards the bottom right and the sphere has this kind of rounded shape going round and around so yeah let's say it is a sphere that's connecting those two cylinders together and what's left here will be erased okay so what's left of that big cylinder is removed in order to get the shape that we want and now the tricky part is that there is the um, you know the top part of the bottle that is a little bit bigger than the rest so therefore you know we would need a slightly bigger cylinder for that part for the cap for the cap of the bottle so let's say this is part of the cap and the cap is uh, something like that right there we are okay so we have this we can erase some of this stuff that's in the background so things are a bit clearer and now even though it's it's a very simple shape you know what's important is that we understood how it's made okay so that's the purpose of this exercise understanding how things are made understanding what's behind Because afterwards it will be a lot easier to draw to draw things in uh, the right way 
if you if you understand those basic shapes that are um, that are the the components of those more com complex shapes. Okay, so we have the bottle. There's also a little bit of darker. You now something over there that helps the cap uh, stay in place and there is also something uh, like a detail over here and that detail is made up of very very thin cylinders that go round and round you know those are those metallic tubes they are cylinders and even those in your mind can be simplified right let's see this is a cylinder and this is a cylinder right this one was another cylinder and this one a cylinder and by imagining you know the shape imagining that here there are all of those curves all of those ovals going round and round you get a feeling of how the this object is three-dimensional how light hits this object Yeah, because if light will hit from fr from uh, straight onwards, like from the front of this object, then you would most definitely have some white here in the middle, right? And then you'd have the grays. So there will be white over here you'll have let's let's just exaggerate right there will be light there if light hits from the front yeah there will be light exactly in that spot and there will be different shades <laughs> yeah different shades of gray all over the place I was laughing because I realized what was what I was about to say but it, it's a word now right shades of gray it's, it's a word it's a couple of words actually three three words okay so now that we understood a bit better how this bottle looks like let's move on to the vase the vase is a bit of a challenging one for this I'll need more water oh yeah the bottle is off you know it looks it looks off if we turn it around it's a lot easier to see right so if we were to draw correctly those lines should be straight and other than that the oval here should be uh, horizontal so yeah yeah it looks off that's why I was saying we don't um, don't necessarily look for accuracy right now but more towards understanding but um, a different exercise in observation would be exactly this one you know what you've pointed out to, to try and make it look more similar like uh, the picture but using the principles like you you first understand how the 3d shape um, 
how the, the object is made out of different 3D shapes and then you try to make it proportional with reality you try to make it realistical based on uh, pictures based on uh, drawing from life which is very important it's a very important skill that I would very much like to exercise so again you know the, the top of the bottle would be something like that it will not be so visible so different uh, different things to take into consideration when trying the other method the one uh, related to accuracy okay so yeah uh, to keep the oval at the bottom um, I think you were referring to the oval in the middle the one I erased I guess you could keep them they are helpful for uh, understanding the the shape and afterwards they can be helpful to to get the right proportions so yeah yeah why not uh, now while trying to do this face I'm thinking how to approach this because hmm. to me it would be quite nice to start from a sphere you see I think you see what I'm talking about so if we start with a sphere and then we add a cylinder it's more or less the same uh, the same uh, circumference or uh, I'm not sure what it's called but the circle at the bottom is exactly the same as the circle at the top okay so you know keeping those connected connecting circles and then connecting with the sphere yeah this the sphere is a bit off center can I move this <laughs> right now I'm gonna I'm gonna do something uh, yeah okay I moved it quite quite a bit I'm not sure this is right but again no trying to to get an understanding of the shapes the large shapes that make up this object I think this goes like like this similar huh. yeah this looks nice okay so I think this is more symmetrical there's another thing you have to take into consideration right when drawing objects many of them have some sort of symmetry okay and over here when connecting to the top of the bay the vase we would have something like this so uh, this area right that is connecting the sphere with the cylinder this I'm not sure what kind of shape that is to be honest with you because it's more like a mesh, uh, not an actual shape, uh, like uh, not not like a simple shape. It's more like a, f a mesh, and that's the same with with this one over here, right? This whole thing again, I think it's a mesh, of sorts. But why, why I'm uh, drawing those as well, you know, drawing those intersections is because those are useful in understanding 
the other parts of the object like the shadows the texture yeah so if we go round and round this object would have this sort of wireframe and yeah I think that's that's pretty much it for the vase no nothing spectacular the proportions are, are a bit off you know you see here there's way less space and if we were to try and get more more accuracy I guess this would be more more appropriate but this is more related to to the observational skills right but for now, for understanding how some basic uh, 3D shapes can come together and create this more complex one, I think this is good. I think this is nice. And again, right. And you see, those drawings that I'm making, they are pretty, pretty uh, rough. The line work is not uh, that uh, controlled. I'm not trying to to make them very clean or or too clear, right? I'm just drawing um, rough enough so that I can be quick about it, but also clean enough so that I can see what I mean, see what I'm drawing, see what I'm trying to draw. What I'm trying to understand, uh, there's a balance in the middle based on what I'm trying to learn today. So this would be very different if I was, let's say, drawing from, um, from observation, trying to get perspective right. In that case, there would be measurements involved, there would be less pressure on the pen, more accuracy, erasing from time to time, erasing some lines. Okay, and now I think we'll go to the most difficult shape. Most difficult shape of the evening, which is a nut and bolt. And uh, this one I think we we can start with one of them uh, because they are pretty much very similar you know one um, follows the other so I think uh, if we want to start with uh, the knot then we can start from uh, a hexagon right Try to draw it in perspective as best as possible. And then adding weight to it. I'm not sure this kind of 3D shape has a name. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But we can imagine, right, that somewhere underneath is the other hexagon at the bottom the base and out of this one first of all we have this circle on top uh, trying to get there trying to make it you know clear enough so that it helps. Oh, quite difficult to get the shape right. But huh. okay, let's stick with this one. And what I want you to notice as well is that this top part, right? This top part is rounded a bit. So it's actually, the edge doesn't stop there, the edge stops a bit lower. So if we can do that really quickly, 
erase the top edge move it a bit lower like this let's see yeah I moved it a bit lower and then it connects with the circle on top so with this circular shape which which goes a bit more like that so I did this uh, just so that you can understand and I can understand what happens with this object how it looks like in 3d this doesn't necessarily help our drawing you know what I did was just a small adjustment but it helps our understanding most of all okay so now on top of that I guess I'll just add the other circle and now you, you can see I'm getting a bit tired right you can see the the circles they kind of stop working out now and that's perfectly fine and then what I noticed there is there is a bit yeah a tiny bit of an indent inside so you would probably see a little bit of the of that edge but just a little and otherwise we would have this part in the middle right this darker part which just goes all the way towards the bottom so yeah it would go maybe until there I guess right and this is usually darker because it's in the shadow right so that's somehow a very distorted uh, nut and the bolt the bolt would be very similar except we add a cylinder that's very elongated and it has all of those um, how do you call them zigzags <laughs> those uh, kind of you'll see what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about but yeah let's let's just start with another hexagon okay and then this one goes as well into 3d and you see the top part is yet again rounded it's exactly what happened here where we moved it a little bit lower and then you know it's like moving the side to that point and then rounding it so now here we can see what happened with the knot earlier why we removed that top bit and I guess that would be the right way to represent the knot as well maybe you know a bit more rounded on those sides this requires more research okay yeah so the bolt is a bit more rounded and then here comes that cylinder we were talking about earlier so the cylinder maybe I made it a bit too too wide but the cylinder would be something like that and it will have the top part again would be quite rounded so a bit more rounded than that 
more like this. So now, um, this is interesting because I'm seeing this top part over here. See it like that. And down here, I'm not seeing any longer because the perspective is not from down the bolt. Perspective is here in the middle. So that's why we see the shape like this. Because we're looking at the, at the middle point of the bolt. Okay. So now, for the start of the zigzag part, zigzag. I'm thinking, uh, this is very logical, you know, this goes starting from here, let's say, this goes round and round and round, you know, it's a very a continuous spiral. So, therefore, if we start with the first one, that means the second one should be exactly the same, the same angle, right? And then the other one, the same angle, and so on and so forth. So, if you want a quick hack for this, I'm just telling you right now the quick hack. You draw those lines uh, a tiny bit curved to one side. And I won't spend too much time now getting them right. I'll just try to, you know, quickly get some of those curves going on. And you can see it ends here, right? So uh, also at the same time, it's not uh, just going this way, but some point goes the other way around. But just for the sake of quickness, fastness. And we simply connect them like so. See? Just a quick, quick observation. So we do all of that. Then we erase very slightly all of those areas. Quick hacks. Every week a new quick hack. And then we would be left off with a pretty okayish looking bolt. Okay, so overall, what's important, right, is to understand how the shape is created, what's the logic behind of it, and then when you want to learn a bit more about proportions, about how to get it right, which we will do in a following uh, stream, most likely, we'll talk about how to how to draw from observation, from reality, and I will pick a subject that's in my room, and I will advise you do the same to pick a subject from your room, and try to do the exercise with me, show you how to take measurements, how to stay in the same place, even though it's a bit more difficult while working on a tablet, but I'll work with what I have, right? It's interesting, right, to hear that it's more difficult to work on this kind of exercise from a tablet and the tablet is made to make things easier but anyway uh, it can be done it can be done so uh, 
we will go through that. I will show you how to do that as well. And I will practice myself and I will learn myself more about how to do it correctly. Because, again, it's about learning. I'm learning a lot. I hope you're learning quite a bit. And, you know, learning together, having a bit of fun, relaxing at the same time. But, you know, combining the pleasurable with the useful. So that being said, I'd like to take another sip of water. And I'd like to thank you all for hanging around, for being here tonight. I hope you had a wonderful evening. I hope you will have a wonderful evening from now on. And other than that, I'll see you all next week. Again, most likely on Thursday. If any changes appear, I will be sure to... Um, to schedule it, to schedule the next stream uh, differently, and you will see in your notifications. But other than that, thanks for being here, thanks for being awesome, thanks for learning, and stay creative, people. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.